Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus chapter 15. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man has a running issue, it's a pussy unhealed wound, out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. So for the Jew, not only is a wound just a wound, but it's also, according to the law, you're unclean. Whether you're bleeding or you're pussing. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue. Whether the flesh run with his issue, or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his unclean. If that thing is running, you're unclean. If it stopped running, you're still unclean. So, there are places that he could keep the secret. And he would not report it to the priest. And yet God says, okay, you may have covered it up, but in my eyes, you're still unclean. Every bed, rest. Wherein he lieth that has the issue is unclean. Hospital beds. If you've got a sick bed in your home. If you were a Jew and a husband and wife slept together, we're going to see if you have that issue. That person, the bed, and the person you're lying with are unclean. Every bed wherein he lies that has the issue is unclean. The bed itself. And everything wherein he sitteth about a waiting room in a doctor's office shall be unclean. Now we happen to go into the doctor's office today to, to get our flu shots. And you know, somebody coughing up a thing and other people in the room and all that. And you don't know why they're sitting there. You don't know why when they go into the room for the doctor, they got that bed. That's unclean. We pulled a little tissue paper down. Well, in the law, that's not good enough. It has to be cleaned. And these doctors glad we're not under the law. The nurses too. Every single patient, they would have to get up and clean that thing thoroughly. And you couldn't use it to after 6 p.m. that day. And whosoever touches his bed. So you lie with it, you touch it. You visit the bed as a doctor's office or a hospital. Shall wash his clothes. And bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even 6 p.m. So you got to put your clothes in the, in the wash machine and you got to get in the tub. Bathe. Now we didn't see bathe in 13 and 14. But we see bathe now. 13 and 14 says you should wash. 
And he that sitteth on anything wherein he is sat that has the issue, a waiting room, chairs, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto even. I don't think many people really would have sought the medical field in the law. And whosoever touches his flesh of him that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto the even. So what do you do under the law, a mother who has a, a son who's gone out and cut himself. I don't know if he had bikes back then, but I've had some very interesting uh, boo-boos as a young child that matches what we're reading here. And gone into my mom and sat down on the seat while she got the mending material and got the iodine to burn, I think, just to do that. But not only as a child, if we were under the law, we're not under the law, we're under grace. I would be unclean, that chair would be unclean, and I made my mother unclean. And before she goes to bed, she's got to go wash and take a bath. Why? Because your son had a bike accident to this morning. And don't sit in that chair yet because i got to wash that entire chair. And that chair cannot be sit upon until after 6 p.m. Thank God you're under the grace. And if he that has the issue spit upon him that is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto the evening. And it's remarkable. I heard a preacher one time say, you know, he says, I'm a spitter. He says, when I get up and preach, my, my mouth saliva. And he says, if, if I would have one of these unclean, uh, the flesh or blood or something like that, he says, I'd be making a congregation in the front row unclean. Aren't you glad we're under grace? And what saddle for a horse... I don't know why saddles chosen out of all the things in, in the world. So whoever he rideth upon that has the issue shall be unclean. Now we're traveling. We're not in the doctor's office. We're not in the hospital. We're going for somewhere. And whosoever touches anything <clears throat> that was under him shall be unclean until the evening. And chair, I don't know, other than chairs and other than a saddle, something that is under this guy. Floor? I don't know. And he that bears any of those things which shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto the evening. And whosoever he touches, not you touching him now, which you already read. If you got a cut and you, with your hands, help that person, you are unclean by you touching him. But if he were to touch you, whosoever he touches that has the issue. So, you're on a bus or a subway and you, you're walking down the subway and you, you got to touch people. you got to thong people like they did with Jesus. And we're coming to an episode here where... A woman touches Jesus, and Jesus says, who touched me? And Peter says, Lord, they're throgging us. They're elbow, this got one in the eyeball. And if any of those people match what we're reading right now throughout the entire life of the Old Testament law, look how many people you're getting uh, unclean. And how many people know that you may be under the Levitical 15 and they don't go wash and they don't go bathe? They don't know. Then that's the ignorance of the law. I, I didn't know that guy was like that. But when you come to find out, then you're to be. Whosoever he touches that has the issue and has not rinsed his hands in water. He shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water 
and be unclean even. So here's one little thing here. You've been touched by the man that's unclean. Go wash your hands. <laughs> that's what it says. If he has not rinsed his hands in water, then he shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe himself. So if you find, oh, that guy's unclean. Oh, wait, wash my hands under. Okay, and I'm done. But if you didn't wash your hands, you got to put your clothes in the washing machine, and you got to jump in the tub. So when you go to hospitals and you go to the doctor's room, what is that picture of that sign you see in the bathrooms in the walls by the the fall? There's a hand there being washed. King James 16, 11, Leviticus 15, verse 11. And I bet you they don't even know why they have that sign. And the vessel of earth, clay pottery, that he touched which has the issue shall be broken. That clay pottery soaks in. If you were to put vinegar or blood or any kind of, of anything in that clay uh, vessel, it soaks in through the clay. And broken. Every vessel of wood shall he rinse in water. And when he that hath an issue is clean, cleansed of his issue, the issue is stopped, it's healed. That he shall number to himself seven days for his cleansing, and wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in running water. Oh, running water. Don't go sit in the tub and sit in your filthiness, and shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take to him two turtle doves, or two young pigeons. That's the same thing as a poor man's offering for a sin offering. And come before the Lord unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and give them unto the priest. And the priest shall offer them the one for the sin offering and the other for the burnt offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord of his issue. So we already see in the beginning of Leviticus the burnt offering, the sin offering, the meat offering. We got to that because when we get to each of uh, the issues in Leviticus, we're going to see those offerings. So now he's clean. If any man see a copulation go out from him, sexual relations, then he shall wash all his flesh in water. Not just parts. You go wash yourself totally and be unclean unto the even. Every garment and every skin, that skin of animals, Wherein is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean unto the evil. And the woman also with whom the man shall lie with seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean unto the evil. Aren't you glad you're not under the law? If a woman have an issue, we're going to start with a new paragraph. And her issue in her flesh be blood. She shall put apart seven days, and whosoever touches her shall be unclean unto the even. Everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. Whosoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto the even. Whosoever touches anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean unto the evil. If it be on her bed, the blood, or on anything whereupon she sitteth, when he touches it, and I don't think it's just the blood, I think it's the bed and whatever she sits on, he shall be unclean unto the evil. If any man lie with her at all, and her flowers. So we're talking about the woman's time of the month. And I forget which, which island group the missionary knew. There are places in the world where they have huts and places where the women, for their, you go there. You're not going to soil your husband and your family. They stick to the Bible. All the bed wherein he lieth shall be unclean. 
So aren't you glad you're not under the law today? Because if you have your cycle, which is normal, every woman who's normal has her cycle, and now your, your husband's just laying over the side of the bed next to you, and you can roll and say, Honey, you're unclean. Get in the tub, wash those clothes. If a woman has an issue of her blood many days out of the time of her separation, or if it run beyond the time of her separation, all the days of her of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of her separation. She shall be unclean. Every bed whereupon she layeth, all the days of her issue shall be unto her as the bed of separation. And whatsoever she sitteth upon shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her separation. And whosoever touches those things shall be unclean, shall wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in water, and be unclean to the even. But if she cleanse of her issue, then she shall number to herself seven days, and after that she shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take unto her two turtles, that be two turtle doves, not two turtles, the reptile, or two young pigeons, and bring them unto the priest to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. So we saw the same thing in Leviticus 12 for a woman who has passed blood in afterbirth for a child. Now here's a woman who's not pregnant. She's having her time, her, her time of the month, and she's unclean. And we see again the sin offering. Mary, we know by having other children, we know that she had this time of the life, time of the month. And every month she had it, she was unclean. And would bring the offering. And then when she gave birth to her daughters and her sons, she was unclean. She would bring the offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for her before the Lord for the issue of her uncleanness. Thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. That they die not in their uncleanness. It's kind of interesting. You mean if they were to die. With the issue. Or with the time of the month. Aren't you glad. You're under grace. When they defile not my tabernacle. That's among them. This is the law of him that has an issue. And of him. Whose seed goeth from him. And is defiled thereof. And of her that is sick of her flowers. More time than it should. And of him that has an issue. Of the man. And of the woman. And of him that lieth with her. That is unclean. Now I have. We'll run over to the gospels. I have Mark. I want to check. Find where it is in Luke. Luke is much better. Not saying Mark is bad. Uh, let's see, Mark 524. I like the one in Luke. About that woman. Yeah, Mark 24. Yeah, it's gonna give me the it's gonna give me the cross reference to Oh Luke 8, 41. There's only one reason why I want to run to Luke on this one. I don't know why that. Luke 8:41, I think I said. Okay, Luke 8:41. Okay, Luke 8:41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him. That he would come into his house. For he had only he had one only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she was lying she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. You know, he's getting an elbow, he's getting his ribs, he's you know. A lot of people. And a woman having an issue of blood twelve years. That pretty much tells us that she is under Levitical 15. 
she's bleeding. Now, we, we don't know if it's the time of month or she had it, but 12 years of bleeding. Luke, the medical doctor, says, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any. Everybody touching her, examining her is getting unclean. Came behind him, Jesus, and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stank. Stop. Medical doctor using big words. She finally stopped bleeding after 12 years. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude is thronging me and press thee and say thou who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody has touched me. For I have perceived that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. Why would she be afraid? That's right. And they're all going to, they're going to have to take a bath. They're all going to have to wash their clothes. I've been made out according to the law. And she declared unto him, Jesus, before all the people, for which cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. He said unto her daughter, Jewish, under the law, Be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. You ain't going to soil Jesus. Luke 8, 41 down to 48. And he didn't tell her, go to the priest like he did with the leprosy. Now, when you're running through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus said the law was up to John, was from Mount Sinai unto John the Baptist. And when you run from John the Baptist to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you're in a period here, you don't know what's going on. People are, 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 have faith to be healed. They have faith to cast devils out. They have faith to stop bleeding. Under the law, Jesus would now be unclean. But he, he's God. And when she touched him, instead of being unclean, she felt in her body that blood has stopped. I'm healed. Wow, all these doctors who's looking at her have unclean. Every chair. We don't know if she was married. If she was married, guess what? Her husband would be clean also. Or she's a woman by the law is she's been completely separated and away from people. Like a leper. But she can be in the camp. And when she when she comes to Jesus, all that pastness is gone now. If she's married, she she can go up to her husband and give him a hug and, and lay around what are you doing? I'm taking a bath. Why? What's that here running? It's the washing machine. Why? Because you hugged me. You made me unclean, woman. No, no, that's all done. That's that's. I've been healed. I am healed. I am clean now. And I was supposed to say, okay, we got to go down to the temple in, in a week and get the turtle doves or get the pigeons. Doesn't mention, you know, just leaves it as the fact that Jesus said, hey, you're healed. Go in peace. Go in peace. That doesn't go to the, go to the temple. Go in peace. I have fulfilled your needs. I have made you clean, woman. Go in peace. And only Jesus can do that. If we were under the law today. You could not have a doctor's office. You could not have a hospital. 
because everywhere where someone is bleeding has been, and there's motor vehicle accidents, and there's people have been cut themselves, they've been shot, there have been all kinds of open wounds that causes the flow of body fluids. You could not have a hospital doctor's office because that chair right now, and that bed is unclean. No one can use it till after 6 p.m. and it's got to be thoroughly washed. That doctor has to wash himself. And yet we get today, as far as the medical world, again, I, I, we go to the, to the Civil War, which they have not learned it. You wash yourself in running water. That washes away the filth and the scum and the diseases. You don't put your hand in a bucket that's been so many other hands in. And if we would get our lessons from the Bible, God said running water, and that has prevented diseases spreading. Not many diseases in the hospital spread because someone hasn't washed. It does because someone don't wash their hands. But most of them now are airborne. And if God for the prevention of diseases says wash your hands, we do that. Now you get to the fact is of eternal life. And God says believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. And that is completely ignored. And when that's ignored, God can't bless you. God cannot give you eternal life. We as a nation, you want to get right, we got to get back to what God says and do it how God said. Oh, we're not under the law. Okay, don't go wash your hands and take care of people who are sick and all that and catch it yourself. Go ahead. And then come to me, tell me we're not under the laws. Listen, the law is not salvation, but there's much stuff in the law to say, hey, this is remarkable this is something that god has prescribed and it's a healthy it's a it's a moral thing now i won't go to hell for not honoring my parents but the bible says in the law honor thy parents i do well if i do it i honored and respected both my parents and one parent right now is saved and going to heaven my dad no not yet but who knows? And what we see is medical guidelines, chapter 13, chapter 14, and chapter 15. It was a thing that was been learned late in life in the world. Wash your hands in running water to prevent diseases. And imagine, imagine learning that something in a Bible. And think about it again, up to the Civil War time. No medical institution has ever done that. Gag green was spread from body to body because they would put their hands in a bucket of water, not running water.